there is a lot of research so far that shows negative outcomes in the gig economy. The story that I tell about about Uber drivers or about delivery couriers is a story that has been told by other researchers in the popular press about the risks and the, the damage of the gig economy in lots of ways. But one of the things I'm always very keen to do is not to tell a story of gig workers as victims, of people who are in precarious jobs, who are trapped, who can't have a say over their work, is I think there is a po there are positive experiences in the gig economy. And I think particularly for many workers who are searching for forms of flexibility, what they find in the gig economy, whether they find that bargain to be more complicated when they get there, is an indictment, I think, in many ways of more traditional forms of work, that people aren't able to find employment that fits around their life, that fits around family commitments or studying or, or whatever it might be. And so I think we really have to draw attention to the potential of more flexible work. Um, and I've spoken to you know, Uber drivers in South Africa who are able to access work and have never had formal employment before and are entering into uh, a more formal form of work. Uh, or drivers in India who are able to to gain access to work that they might not have been able to otherwise. But I think the reality is that when people find that work, that balance isn't working for them. And I think this is a question about employment status, I think in many ways, is I think what we have to look at is people are searching for something at work and we need to think about how we can deliver that for people. because. If you have a workforce of people who are feeling precarious, can't take holiday or, or, or sick pay when they're ill, that has longer term impacts. And I think that's the question we need to ask ourselves is it's not just about the individual Uber driver. You know, it's not just about the individual care worker. It's about how as a society we can think through the bargain of work. But I also think it's about having a, a political debate too about whether employment law works in the way it does now, whether the tax system works for supporting people, whether labour market enforcement is working in the right way, and seeing that that kind of collective discussion and voice is what drives forward work. So it's not just the responsibility of the employer, it's not just the responsibility of the state, but that workers should have a, an active say in shaping work in ways that delivers for them too. And that's really how we'll get to the future of work that, that delivers on the, the potential promises that we can see right now.